Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is lecture 54 and we are going to continue our discussion on impedance matching and uh, Smith chart. So, if you recall in the last lecture, we talked about Smith chart and how adding capacitors or inductors either in series or parallel, how you kind of navig navigate or move along the Smith chart. We talked about that, right. We also showed that if you just have a transmission line, it does not change the magnitude of the reflection coefficient. Uh, what it does is that it introduces a, a rotational change, it, it changes the phase, okay. So, it does not change the magnitude. So, we also talked about that. So, today we will do some very quick examples of how to uh, match impedances, not going into much details, uh, but just to give a flavor of how you use mid chart to the impedance matching, okay. So, to the whiteboard here. Uh, so, you can see that this is a Smith chart and it is a, an in, uh, impedance, a classical impedance based Smith chart. I am not showing the admittance here. Uh, suppose I have a load of 100 plus 100 J ohm, which you normalize to suppose 2 plus 2 J. Now, you want to match it uh, 50, like looking from the in input side, I, I should see 50 ohm, okay. So, I want to transform it to 50. And so, I need to put an a matching network for instance, okay, that is impedance matching network. Uh, what do I do about it, right? So, first of all, we need to find out where 2 plus 2 J is in the Smith chart, okay. So, for that, what we do is that we look at the combined, uh, you know, impedance and admittance uh, Smith chart together. The blue curves from the left hand side are the admittance, the red circles from the right hand side are the impedances. So, this point, if you can see where I am putting my red dot here, is 2 plus 2 J. So, it is 2 point here and then I go and I see this is going to be at 2. You can see that red point here, no? 2. So, this point is my 2 plus 2 J, okay. So, uh, that means my load is here and I need to make it, uh, I reach this point. This is the match point, you know, that is the match point, which is 50 ohm basically, correct? The center of this mixture. So, I, I cannot arbitrarily move of course, I only can move along these circles and I told you that you desirably do not move along these lines, you know, along these lines because those are purely resistive lines and they will lead to losses. So, you try to avoid those, uh, you know, these lines, resistive lines, okay. So, do, do not move around along those lines, okay. You want to move along uh, capacitive or inductive uh, circles, okay. So, the first thing you are, you are here. So, what you can do is that there are two ways of course. One is that, uh, no, before, before that what you, to come to this point, you need to make the point come to this circle, you see this circle. You can come to this circle. Once you come to this circle somewhere, you can go to this point which is 1, okay. So, what I do is that I, I move along this circle. This is now an admittance circle. This circle goes like that, okay. This is an admittance circle. This is an admittance circle, I repeat, okay. So, I am moving along the admittance circle until I meet this point which is the point which this circle intersects, you know, this circle and this circle intersects there, correct. So, I have to start moving, this is my start and I have to move anti-clockwise along the admittance circle here until I reach this point. And once I reach that point, I switch back to the impedance circle because this is an impedance circle and this is an admittance circle. I switch back to the impedance circle and I move again counterclockwise come until this point, okay. So, now the things to note here are because I am moving on the admittance circle this way, I am going to, you know, you know, in, in admittance circle everything is parallel or you can say shunt. Shunt and parallel they are the same thing. So, I am moving in the admittance circle, I am going to have something in shunt or parallel. What am I going to add? I told you every, every time you go this way, it is an inductor. So, I am going to have an inductor in shunt, okay, with the load that I had. The load was, if you recall, which was the load? The load was your 100 plus 100 J, 2 plus 2 J, okay, which is this load. So, I am going to add an inductance, uh, inductor in shunt and then now I am going to move along, once I reach this point, I am going to move along this, correct. So, that is your impedance circle which means you are going to add something in series and what are you going to add? You are coming down, so you, it is capacitor. If you re recall the last uh, discussion we had, this is your capacitance in series. So, every time you move this way, it is capacitor in series, every time you move that way, it is inductor in series. And this is the impedance circle. On the admittance circle, it will be the opposite. So, every time you have an admittance circle, you know, like that, yes. So, this is your parallel inductor and this is uh, your uh, parallel capacitor or shunt capacitor, okay. So, now I know that thing. So, essentially, I am going to add this will be a series capacitor, okay. So, I am going to add a series capacitor here. And if I do that, 
then I will see that from this side looking, I will see a 50 ohm. So I have matched 2 plus 2j or rather 100 plus 100j into 50 ohm. Now the value of the inductor and the value of the capacitor that you are going to put are what you need to find out from the Smith chart and the Smith chart will give you the value. Uh, however, you need to know the frequency also, the omega at which you are doing it because you are doing it at a spot frequency. Okay, It is not a broadband here. So again, I will remove the annotation here. What we do is that because I am moving from this point on the admittance circle to this point, I need to find out how much have I moved. Okay, How much have I moved? So how will I do that? For that, I look at the admittance circle. So this is the admittance point here, point 2. Uh, so first of all, I need to look for this point. This point was 2 plus 2j, but now because I am going to move on the admittance circle, I want to read the value in the admittance uh, chart. So I look at the left hand side. So this value will go here. So that is close to point 3, but it turns out that point is actually in the admittance, the exact same point in the y circle will be 0 0.25 minus 0 0.43j. It is negative on the top. For admittance, it is negative on the top. For impedance, it is positive on the top, if you recall. So essentially this point is 0.3 and this is minus 0.2. Uh, this is uh, first of all I have to come here. So this is you know 0.2 something. So this is 0.25 and then I move up along this direction until I ma make sure that I, I am at this line. So that is 0.2 something. So that is oh sorry that is 0.3 something. So that is 0.43 j. Okay. Uh, no actually sorry that point is this point. Okay. This point is 0.25 minus 0.25 j. Okay. Let me again remove the annotation here. So what I am meaning to say is here, I need to read this, this point is uh, 2 plus 2j on the impedance circle, but on the admittance circle how much is this value? So for that I need to come from this side, okay, this point is around 0 0.25, that is what they say and then I am moving up here until I meet this point line and that is between minus 0.2 and minus 0.3, so that is minus around 0 0.25j, okay. So minus 2.25 minus 0.25j is the value of this in the admittance chart which means the if this is z then 1 by z or y will be equal to this okay that is what it means so this is the admittance value. So that point is minus uh, 0.25 minus 0.25j in the admittance uh, circle now I am going to move counterclockwise until I reach this point. So it is the same value of the real part which is 0.25 so this point will be 0 0.25 minus something what is that thing so I have to come from here and I have to see where this value comes here. So that is around 0.45 or something. So it turns out to be minus 0.43. So that value is 0.43j which is this point. In other words, in other words, what is happening is that this value in the admittance is 0 0.25 minus 0.25j and this value is 0 0.25. It is the same real, uh, same, uh, real component here, right, minus 0.43j which means this part that I have moved you know is equivalent to the difference of these two which is 0 0.18 j correct. So I have moved about 0 0.18 j and that is negative I have moved minus 0 0.18 j to reach this point do you see my point. Now this is your parallel inductor I told you okay so it means your inductor omega l will be equal to 1 by minus 0 0.18 j. Okay, so that will give you L will be equal to uh, 5.55 divided by omega whatever the omega is the frequency that you choose. So you can get the value of L, the value of L in nano Henry or whatever which you need to add in shunt so that you will reach this point, this point that I am showing you here. Okay, So you reach that point. Now once you reach that point you have to come back from this point by adding a series capacitor to this point. How much have you do you have to move? You have to move from this point to this point. So now I have to switch back to impid uh, impedance. So this point in the impedance circle is uh, 1 plus what this goes like that. So that is 1 plus 1.74j that is what it means. Okay. So this point is 1 plus 1.74j and this is just pure 1. So the amount that I have to move from here to here is 0. Point, uh, sorry 1.74j. Okay. I am moving actually I am decreasing it from 1.74j to 0 j I am coming to this point right. So minus 1.74 j is equal to 1 by j omega c and if I know c if I know omega then it will be basically omega into 1.74. So from that I can find out the capacitance value in some peak of error or whatever. So that for capacitance value and in shunt is that inductance value that I put you put it at load of 2 plus 2 j 
and what you see is that you from this side you will see 50 ohm exactly that's how you do it now of course there's other way also instead of uh, instead of going to the top half of the smith chart you could have also come to the bottom of the, of the smith chart which means instead of moving this way i would have moved on the circle here until i reach this point and then that's uh, what is happening is that this is admittance but i'm coming down so that's a capacitor in shunt that's a capacitor in shunt because i'm coming on the admittance circle so it's shunt and i'm coming down so that's capacitor once i reach, reach this point suppose this point is x then i have to travel along this impedance circle until i reach this point which is on the impedance circle so it's series and this is moving up so it's inductor so i have to add an inductor in series of appropriate values then i'll also see 50 ohm against the same load i could do that also okay there are many ways to do it or what i okay so there may, this is another way and actually there are many many ways for instance i'll show you another way okay so for instance if to come to this point you can also lie on this circle on the admittance circle this even if you are on that cycle you can come and reach the matched point so what you do is that from this point you start and uh, you know you could try to come to this circle somehow but for that uh, you need to take help of resistive lines and that is not desirable because then you will incur losses okay then you are, you are going to incur losses but uh, so the easier way to go is here and then come here or you can come here and then go here okay sorry go here okay now what determines which way you have to choose the thing that determines primarily is that the value of the inductance and the capacitance that you are going to get if you go this way versus if you go this way you have to take those into account because this value of the inductances and capacitances cannot be unrealistic if this is either too small or if it's either too large then you may not get uh, a capacitor and inductor of that value easily and it may not be even feasible so you have to take values that are realistic so that is one thing that will determine and also they uh, you know if you are looking at a more range of frequencies and things like that in the design then you need to also take that into account so realistic values have to be obtained otherwise just because theoretically you get something in smith chart does not mean realistically you will get that value of a conductor or capacitor okay so that is very important to take care of and another thing is bandwidth we'll come to that uh, you know whenever you have this impedance matching there's a certain bandwidth like the range of frequencies over which it is valid and so sometimes the bandwidth may be a constraint you want it to be a larger bandwidth or slightly smaller bandwidth etc so then you have to do uh, choose the combination of L and C that will give you a appropriate bandwidth as per your desire desired spec okay but that's the basic bottom line of Smith uh, you know impedance matching on the Smith chart we'll do one or two more quick examples but there are many many different ways of uh, actually doing uh, Smith, uh, Smith impedance tune uh, matching there is single stop tuning there's double stop tuning there are many many things okay but we are not going to talk about all those details um, what I'll say here and a very important thing that is here I told you that you know you had a say a series inductor and a uh, shunt capacitor with the load okay and that makes your input impedance looking as 50 ohm now you see this capacitor this inductor you can buy it from the market you know and you can get a lumped a discrete inductor of a certain nano henry value or a discrete capacitor of a certain picofarad or femtofarad value you can buy from the market for instance just giving an example that's a discrete lumped element and it may work well for lower frequency maybe a couple of gigahertz however as you increase the micro frequency uh, distributed be effect becomes more prominent and so in that case either this value of the capacitor inductor could be too unrealistic or the lumped because they are lumped they are discrete uh, you know element they may not, they may introduce error because you know you are looking at higher frequency or very lower wavelength so f you know uh, distributed nature of the wave propagation comes into picture in that case it is desirable and people do that that a capacitor or an inductor can be actually the behavior can be mimicked or rather implemented by a transmission line a transmission line which is open like this behaves like a capacitor a transmission line that is short behaves like an inductor of a certain inductance value you can decide that value of the inductance or the capacitance based on the line that you're looking at the length of the transmission line will dictate the value of the capacitance or the inductance an open transmission line is a capacitor a short transmission line is an inductor you can put them either in series or in shunt although in shunt there's more popular you know you try to add them in parallel sometimes you can also add them in series by the way the transmission line what it means is that this rc network that you had introduced as an impedance matching network can be purely implemented by transmission lines only without taking any help from any lumped inductor or capacitor that you buy from the market or website you can just use transmission line and this is the de facto or the common 
method at higher frequencies such as you know X band or above you know higher frequencies you have to do this transmission line and in MMIC you have to do that you know everything you have to be implement has to be implemented on using a transmission line concept. So, an open transmission line is like a capacitor, a short transmission line is like an inductor ok and if you are talking about an open that this is the open point ok and you are moving along this periphery when you are talking about including a capacitor and from the short you are trying to move along this capacitor along this along this periphery while you are talking about adding an inductor. Now, how do, how do you do that? I will just give you a quick example here. Suppose I want to implement minus 20 j as the capacitance. This is the, the capacitance value. I mean what it means is that 1 by j omega c is equal to minus 20 j so of a certain capacitance value at a certain frequency. Now, this minus 20 j I want it to be implemented in a transmission line. How will you do that? Of course, if I have if I if I am given the liberty of buying a component from the market then I am just going to do minus 20 j is equal to 1 by j omega c. So, that becomes uh, c is equal to 1 by uh, 20 omega. So, if I know the frequency suppose the frequency is uh, 1 gigahertz. So, that will be 1 into uh, 10 to the power 9. So, that is uh, 1 by 2 into 10 to the power minus 10. So, that is 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 10 or you can say it is a, a 50 picofarad correct this is 50 picofarad. So, I can go to the market or I can go to a website and I will say ki I, I need to buy a 50 picofarad capacitor and if I buy a 50, to a 50 picofarad capacitor for a 1 gigahertz signal I am going to get minus 20 j as the capacitance, but no I do not want that discrete capacitor I want you to implement in a transmission line. How do you do that? You start from because it is an open line the transmission line it is open transmission line is like a like a capacitor and by the open when I say open I do not mean the there is no load there is a load suppose there is a load here and you have to implement a capacitor it can be in shunt which means I am taking two points here and I am having a transmission line like that which is kept open and then this transmission line continues. There is a transmission line but I have a parallel connection taking branching off as a shunt which is a capacitor it is an open transmission line correct. So, I have a capacitor in shunt if I short it up that is an inductor in shunt I am just giving an example ok. So, this point is the open point. So, what I do is that I move along the outer periphery until I reach minus 20 j. Now, if I do a normalization at 50 ohm then minus 20 j is minus 0.4 j. So, where is minus 0.4 j? This is minus 1 j, this is minus 1.5 j uh, oh sorry this is I am looking at the impedance circle I am sorry I have to look at the admittance uh, I have to, sorry I was looking at the admittance I have to look at the impedance which is the red. So, this point is minus uh, 1.0 j this is minus 0.8 j minus 0.6 j minus 0.4 j minus 0.2 j etc. Okay, so, this is minus 0.4 j this point. So, I have to come to this point essentially because this is minus 0.4 j. So, I start from this point and I move along the periphery until I come to this point. So, how much did I move by the way this point corresponds to 0 0.25 lambda ok. Do not ask how because these are details in the it is basically on the you are moving on the outer periphery you are looking at the you can say the phase angle in a way ok. So, this is 0.25 lambda and the entire Smith chart goes from 0 lambda to 0.25 lambda again 0.25 lambda to 0.5 lambda, but 0.5 lambda is 0 because 0.5 lambda is one complete rotation around the Smith chart ok. So, this is 0.25 lambda and this 0.4 j minus 0.4 j if I look at the value it comes out to be 0 0.44 lambda approximately ok. So, essentially from 0.25 lambda I am having to go to 0 0.44 lambda in order to be able to get to point minus 0.4 j uh, as the value. So, this difference that I am putting is around 0 sorry difference I am putting is around 0 0.19 lambda. So, which means 0 0.19 or 189 they are saying 0 0.1 this if this is open for instance this length of the transmission line that you are putting in has to be 0 0.19 lambda. Lambda is the wavelength of course, at uh, you know you can convert any frequency that you have say 1 gigahertz or 10 gigahertz into lambda. So, 0 0.19 times lambda is the length of the transmission line that you need to add in order to get to minus 0.4 j or minus 20 j as the capacitance. So, you are able to choose that length of the transmission line in order to get to a desired capacitance value. Similarly, you can do it for inductor. So, this is just I wanted to highlight ok. Now, when you of course, I have already talked about impedance matching this is what is written here you are transforming a, any arbitrary impedance to a desired matched say for instance 50 ohm impedance ok. And then as around the circuit looking in the circuit you need 
it's desirable to have 50 ohm you can say it's an internally matched circuit for instance okay so suppose i looking at the transistor this, this is the input side by the way this is not the output side i have 50 minus j30 and i want it to look at 50 ohm so essentially i have to add j30 then it will become 50 ohm right and j30 is basically inductor similarly you know whatever and this is basically what i have already explained so i'll not again spend much time here so this j30 can be implemented either by a discrete lumped inductor that you buy from the market which works well for lower frequency but at higher microwave frequencies you need to implement that using a transmission line okay and a, sh a short circuited transmission line will mimic an inductor okay these are all things i have already talked about now if you have an inductor and a capacitor based on how do you combine there are eight possible components so for instance the capacitor is in series and inductor sorry the capacitor is shunt and the inductor is series you can have two configuration the capacitor is here the capacitor is here correct similarly you can have both inductor you can have both capacitor or you can have shunt inductor series capacitor so essentially both can be inductor both can be capacitor you can have series inductor and shunt capacitor or you can have series capacitor and shunt inductor and for each of them you can have two combination as you see each of these eight combination essentially tries to bring you to a particular region in the smith chart and you can do it step by step but in general if you have a feel for where each of these combination brings you to the smith chart then it, it helps quickly coming to that desired matching network for instance this series capacitor and shunt inductor brings you at this position of the smith chart whereas a series capacitor with a shunt inductor in the other configuration these are like the same but you know the capacitor is in series with the load alone but here the capacitor is in series with the parallel combination of the load and the shunted inductor so this brings you here that brings you there for instance so this kind of things you know these are going to bring you here so it kind of helps you navigate along the smith chart but if you know the exact values you can always do a step by step the way we discussed and you can come back to this match point from wherever you are on the smith chart so for instance someone tells you why don't you match 150 minus 50 j ohm to 50 ohm so this becomes 3 minus j so where is 3 minus j 3 is here minus j is here so this a point is the point that you need that you use the load and you want to bring a to c point how will you do that so first you have to move from a to b along this circle so there is a circle that will be like that and this is the admittance circle correct this is an admittance circle so you are going to add in shunt what are you going to add in shunt this is going down so it's a shunt capacitor you are going to add a shunt capacitor with the load the load is 3 minus j ohm or 3 minus j okay and then you reach the point b and after you reach point b you switch back to the impedance circle you go and add a series inductor okay so you get and the values of this of course will depend on how much have you moved along this line okay so i have discussed this exam similar example before so i'll not spend much time here if you go from point a to point b you are going in the same real circle so how much is the imaginary circle you have to look here to look at point a okay this is the point and then i'll look at point b this is the point b so this difference of the two values that you're getting some you know some j for instance is the inductor uh, is the capacitor that you're going to add you can implement it in a transmission line you can buy a discrete component if it is lower frequency then again from this point to this point you have to go they are both on the same circle so that's why their b point and a point will have a c point sorry and the b point will have the same real part so you're moving along the Im impedance circle in the imaginary part you have to look at this value okay and you see that suppose this is your minus uh, 0.75 j so you are essentially adding plus 0.75 j to come to one so essentially you are adding a series inductor omega l whose value is equal to 0.75 j and so you find out the l 0.75 by omega if you know omega okay and that value of course you can implement in a transmission line also instead of buying a discrete component this is how you move however there is another way to move here which is that instead of coming from this point to this point and going here i can make it more complicated i can come to this point to this point and then i go here a series inductor i come to, i reach this point d then i again switch back to admittance i add a shunt capacitor i come here and then again i switch back to impedance i add a series inductor i come here so this becomes uh, more complicated because you have two loops here one okay and then two what i mean is uh, of course you are going from this way to that way and then again from this way to that way it's it's a little bit more complicated you need two lc networks correct in the other one you just need one lc network so the first situation when you come from a to b, b c this is your uh, you know either you can do it in this way or you can do it this way 
okay 50 ohm resistor these are the lc networks you can do it either way you can go from here and come here or you can go this way and come in. either way it's only one lc and one uh, resistor one inductor and one capacitor but if you do the two step matching then you need a more complicated you have the first step then you have the second step it's more complicated why do you do that because this second step which is more complicated uh, gives you a slight advantage in bandwidth what i mean is that if i plot the gain of this uh, you know this network or instance in a, it's there's, it's not a gain per se it's not an active device but i'm looking at the bandwidth you can see the frequency response of this lc network if i have a single discrete frequency like this or this then i get a frequency response or the shown at the dark curve here like this okay, can you see that here okay but if i have do a two step like two step more complicated one this then i'm going to get a slightly increased bandwidth you see i'm getting a more increased bandwidth so i can be here for instance and I can still get very good, uh, you know, performance in the in the LC network. So you you get better, slightly better bandwidth when you go for this two-step more complicated. So it depends on the design, what kind of bandwidth you are looking at. If you are looking to operate at at a one gigahertz, then you know why do you go for a two-step? You just go for a single step and it makes life simple. But if you are looking at say I want to operate at one point five to two gigahertz, uh, then yeah, two-step is desired because at one step you are going to significantly uh, degrade the performance of the impedance matching network it's a bandwidth of that network we're talking about okay so that brings us to basically the conclusion of uh, smith chart and uh, um, about impedance matching and the conclusion of this lecture because uh, we discussed whatever is necessary to understand and appreciate a smith chart and impedance matching and how you can implement them in a transmission line configuration as i told you there are many many more ways many many more things such as single stub double stub matching etc um, you know to do impedance matching will you can this you can refer to a proper microwave engineering course for that but in so far as this course is concerned this is just to give you a flavor that this is what impedance match means this is what smith chart means and this is what amplifier designers or rf circuit designers do with the devices that we make you know as a device engineer once you make the rf device this is how they try to transform the impedance to a 50 ohm okay so with that i will try to conclude this lecture today uh, and thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next lecture where we are going to talk about uh, or we're going to introduce the concept of passive elements in a, in a RF circuit. Okay. So thank you for your time.